Well, well, well. We made it here. At long last. I'm Big Mac Davis here, and welcome back to Doom 3 BFG Edition, the 100% walkthrough for the PC, played through Steam on the veteran difficulty setting. This is Area 16, the Delta Lab, Sector 2. We're one step closer down the Delta Labs. We entered the UAC Biological Research. And here's an elevator here. So yeah, when you do that, one imp will spawn in the fray. Now, it doesn't matter which way you go, they both take you to the same area. But along the way, watch out for the imp that crawls out of the floor, as well as the imp behind him. Now, if you went the other way, you would get armor shards, but also this vent grate would also pop up. Well, would either pop up. It, it pops up on either side, basically. Oh my goodness. So, what I do here is I back up and let the imps and the other enemies come for me. Also a commando zombie. That's essentially the reason why I back up, is because of that guy. So now in the reception area, on the right side, you can get some shotgun shells as well as some armor shards if you need them. And at the receptionist's desk, you can get some small med packs if you also need them. And what's also funny is this button here, open security hatch. We can get some much needed supplies from the little closet there that opens up. Now we'll head through the bathroom as our next stop. What's cool about the mirror is that, yeah, it does show the weapons that you carry. That's a big gun. That's also a big gun. Oh, man. All right. What's that breathing sound? Well, it's not the zombie. There's still some breathing going on here. Now, if you try and jump over to look inside, there's nothing. But also, two imps will spawn. I'll just make sure both of them die as well. Now the problem here is that on your way out of the bathroom, two more imps will come for you. So I like to have my grenades handy. Why not use the grenades, you know? That's so fun to just see them fly violently and die. And that's literally everything that can be done in the receptionist area. So now, we're ready to go up this elevator. And into the level 2 archives. Now, the first goal of the level 2 archives is indeed to take care of a commando zombie. Our next goal on the upper banister is to take care of an imp that pops out of a closet when you grab the items. And 
And then once all the enemies are dead, yeah, we can gather up all the supplies that we need from this upper banister. We were just down there. Now in this room, one thing I like to do is let the zombies come for me. Because there's a timer going on right now behind the scenes. And after about 30 seconds or so, a commando zombie spawns in the office area. And I don't want my back to be turned to him. Just wait. He spawns over there somewhere. There he comes. So we'll run back to the elevator and let him come for us. So now in the office area, don't forget the hand grenades on the left side, but also the PDA of Peter Raleigh. We'll listen to that in just a little bit because I want to get another commando zombie out of the way um, when you head down these stairs. Behind you. Whoa. I'm surprised that tentacle didn't get me. I am thankful for that, actually, to be honest. Some shotgun shells and... Maybe some other stuff, I don't know. We'll get to these supplies very shortly. For right now, we'll take care of a zombie right there. There's also a health machine if you need it, and a Delta Labs restricted access storage cabinet. But we don't have the code for number 112 yet. Some pistol clips if we need it. And so now we'll listen to the audio log of Peter Raleigh. See what he has to say. Observation of science personnel. This is the audio log of medical supervisor Peter Raleigh, dated October 29th, 2145. We have exhausted all known forms of drug treatment in hopes of finding a way to abate this strange outbreak of dementia, and I have yet to receive any additional data from the psychiatrists back on Earth. Options are quickly dwindling. Approximately 80% of all extraplanar participants exhibit signs of mild neuroses within the first 48 hours after returning from their expeditions. Within 72 hours, 75% of patients exhibit extreme signs of paranoid delusion and violence. We have isolated these cases in hopes of finding the pathogen. As yet, we can find no biological contaminants that would lead to such drastic changes in cognitive processing. It seems that whatever this pathogen is, it attacks higher brain functions and only leaves more basal functions in the lower brain stem. We've witnessed that a high percentage of subjects lose ability for rational thought and communication skills, and then the physical changes become evident. Subjects in this group appear to atrophy. Skin pales, muscles become slack, bone, teeth, and fingernails become almost translucent, veiny sinews of their former selves. I have never seen anything like this in my career. Our observations continue. Hmm. I'm kind of taking a little bit of a hint there that bones and teeth become almost translucent. Doesn't that sound an awful lot like the Revenant as well, as if he may be a humanoid of some kind? But yeah, how could so many people exhibit the same signs of dementia? So it can't be dementia. It has to be some other demonic influence. Death of Steve Jensen. This is the audio log of medical supervisor Peter Raleigh, dated November 1st, 2145. Patient 0432, a private Steve Jensen of the UAC Darklight Armor Corps Division, expired today at 1543 of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. This is approximately 110 hours after his return from expeditionary missions. Private Jensen was suffering from paranoid delusions and full-blown dementia. Treatment was unsuccessful. He was the last surviving member of his outfit. 
Four other squad mates, who also came back with Private Jensen, expired from injuries suffered on that last mission shortly after their return. Before his death, Private Jensen was heard screaming in both English and other languages, something about demon hordes feasting on our souls. The other language was later discovered to be Aramaic. Due to security concerns in the area, I've secured some armaments within my office. Okay, thank you for securing the ammo in your office, but you didn't give us the code yet. That's the problem. Huh. Steve Jensen, self-inflicted gunshot wound, and he died. And... <laughs> That's so bizarre. This... I really don't want to be here anymore, you guys. Why do we have to explore the Delta Lab Sector 2? Oh, he has emails as well. Dr. Raleigh, just a reminder to let you know your order of antipsychotics have arrived from pharmaceuticals. There are quite a few large boxes here, and we are a bit short-handed at the moment. If you could have someone from your department come and retrieve these packages, it would be much appreciated. Ben Peterson, UAC Supply Coordinator. Dr. Raleigh, we are filling up the available infirmary beds faster than we can get patients released. I don't see myself releasing any at all, actually. I am gravely concerned about where we expect to put more men if the current trend in testing isn't relaxed before we can determine the cause of this psychosis. Sincerely, Medical Technician Phil Wilson. Oh my gosh, they're filling the beds faster than they can get people out. That's not good. That's not good at all, actually. Alright, so about these supplies in here, you can't jump through the window here, no matter how hard you try. So what we have to do is jump on this box, and then jump, jump crouch through. And we can gather up the supplies here. And then we can go out this window, actually. But when you do that, I think like two zombies will come for you from the next area. So we'll just blow them apart that way. Making progress, Marine? Your journey is futile. You will die, and your soul will be mine. Uh, no. My soul will not belong to you. Now, this next room is extremely dangerous, so what I like to do is just rush in and then rush out and let the commando zombie with a chain gun come for me. Now, a revenant has also spawned in the fray. As long as he does not see you, he will engage... Well, maybe not, actually. There we go. I guess the... The commando zombie with a chain gun has to fire at the Revenant. So now they'll infight. I want to watch this. Yeah! The commando zombie with a chain gun died. How about the Revenant? Yeah, I basically use this corner here as my hold point against him. Now it's safe to go inside this room. Don't miss the ammo belt behind these crates as well. Now there's a door on the left for operations, but it's locked, and a door on the right for bio labs, but it's also locked. So we'll head through this door to restricted area. jump over the debris and crouch under the debris. Now, if we try to go to the observation room, we're going to be disappointed. We can't get through there, so we'll have to go to test chamber one. Yeah, there's nothing over here, so let's go. Ah, who's there? Oh, thank God. You're not one of them. I thought everyone else was gone. I... 
I was part of this. I helped them. The madness of opening to another dimension. Look, I, I don't... We don't have much time. We let it through. The evil. The protective stabilizer on the portal just failed after Petruger took the device. It, it was an artifact we had found in the ruins. He took it into the portal. And hell followed him out. You have to help me first. I'm going to try to get the teleporter systems running again. The areas are destroyed around us, so it's the only way through this part of the complex. You need to find me a working plasma inducer. It's all I need to get the teleporter working. You can look for it in operations. I have a security clearance. I'll unlock some doors for you. There. We don't have a lot of time. Please hurry. Retrieve the plasma inducer from the operations sector server room. We see a video log here, but we can't access it quite yet. And let's talk to him some more. Don't have much time. Get that plasma inducer, quickly. Time is running out. Find the inducer and get back here quickly. I'm gonna stay here and work on the computer some more. Time is running out. Find the inducer and get back here quickly. So what did this guy say? That Dr. Petruger took an artifact into the teleporter, went to hell, and then came back and hell followed with him? He took this device. An archive photo of this device. Artifact ID U1 discovered in Caverns Archaeological Dig Site 3. Research report filed November 14th, 2145. Download full report. Data sent to the PDA. Let's read about this device that Dr. Petruger took through. You'll find it in your personal email. A soul cube. Report filed by Ian McCormick. I've been working on the Soul Cube for a few weeks now. It is a fascinating artifact, and as it turns out, it has some amazing properties. I wrote a new glyph pattern query yesterday and let it run all night. With the new query, the linguistics computer finally cracked the remaining glyphs. The Soul Cube is by every definition a weapon and it seems to have been built to repel whatever type of creatures invaded this ancient culture. If I am reading them right, during a battle, the cube gains power with each life the wielder takes. When it is fully charged, it can be used to slay even the strongest of creatures. Where am I? Strongest of creatures. Even more impressive is that when it kills a creature, it transfers that creature's life force back to who is using the cube. I know this sounds like magic, and I have not been able to activate it to prove the theory, but this is what the glyphs illustrate. The glyphs specifically point out that you must kill five creatures before it becomes charged, and then amazingly, it will tell you it is ready. It is almost like a sentient being. This object is a fantastic find. Spelt glyphs wrong, by the way, up here. Ian McCormick, CC Research Archive Storage. Soul Cube, huh? Well, I would love to get my hands on that and use that as a weapon. Now, you can continue going further if you want into Chamber 1, but it's just a dead end. It won't lead you anywhere. We can't activate the teleporter yet. Now, he did unlock some doors for us, the operations door and the biolabs door. But we want to be very careful. Wow. Okay. Yes, I have the wrong gun equipped, actually. Boy, this is a... This is interesting, isn't it? Where'd he go? Okay, fair enough. That gives me time to set up a checkpoint here. Um, <clears throat> that did not go as planned, actually. Um, what I'd like to do is open this door and then kill the machine gun zombie with a uh, rocket to the floor, kind of like this, and then rush out and deal with the revenant, but... Uh, it didn't work out that way, but that's okay. So, we could go through the operations door if we want to, and we are going to do it, actually, but 
we'll come to a dead end eventually, but at least we'll be able to, to kill some exclusive enemies. They'll only show up here. They'll only show up here if you head through operations first. Watch out for another imp that will charge. Now in this T intersection, we'll head down the left path first, but we must be wary of an enemy. Kind of forgot where he comes from. Um, he comes from this elevator here, but it's, it's actually jammed on the very top of the elevator. We'll be on the very top of the elevator later on in this mission and we'll unjam it, actually. So now we'll head down the other path. Now these doors are all locked. We can't get through any of them. We have to unlock them. And yeah, these imps, by the way, are the exclusive enemies. They will not show up if you come here when the power is on. Well, now, ouch. Go to sector security and terminate the ops lockdown. That's our objective. Now, on the way back, we'll encounter a couple of imps. Again, these are exclusive imps. They will not show up otherwise. So we might as well kill them now, you know? I mean, we're here. Don't try and claw me. Alright. So now we'll go the intended way first, through the biolabs. Now in this area, I just like to wait here for the enemies to show up. A couple of zombies. all the supplies we may need. Wow, I needed all the supplies. This is where we need to go, actually, but... Warning. Halon system's active. Access denied. The Halon system is activated. We'll have to turn it off. <laughs> so, so let me get this straight. We have to turn off the Halon system in order to turn off the lockdown. Uh-huh. Two things we have to turn off. This can be a very dangerous room, so I like to use the machine gun, actually. There will be a couple of imps that will come for you from both sides and try and sandwich you, so that's never a good thing, actually. We will grab the supplies behind all the equipment, if we so need them. Now, if you need some more armor, you can find it under the banister here that we're on. It just, it does require some finagling to get through, but we can grab it. And we'll continue on. Yes, this room is quite disturbing. Medical report 16 this report is playing right now. We will replay it soon. We'll kill all the zombies in here first. Now that report that is playing actually counts towards the video disc, so we do have to listen to the entire thing, which we, which we would anyways, but if you want to get the achievement, we're going to have to listen to it, so we'll let it reset. 
there's no way to like reset it manually. You have to wait. Private Steve Jettle, UAC psychology. So we'll just let it run. I don't want to listen to a partial, you know, like the last half. I want to listen to the full thing. So we'll just wait for it to run out. So how are you guys doing today? I hope I hope with these videos you're able to actually complete Doom 3. Um, let me know if these videos do help you uh, complete the game. So we'll, uh, again, we'll continue waiting. Oh, well, while we wait, there is this button over here. Open security hatch, and we can use the health machine if we need to. So there's there's that much. <clears throat> yeah, the official name for this uh, video disc, basically, even though you can't collect the video disc itself, you can only listen to it. Um, the real name for it is called Medical Report 16-8. That is what it's called, so if you have a checklist of video discs, uh, make sure to add that to the list. So, as I did here on my laptop. On my laptop I have uh, all the uh, codes for all the lockers. I have all the PDAs I have to find in every level, and I have all the um, video discs as well that I have to find. Okay, it, it ended. So. To get it to replay, what you have to do is, well, first we'll grab the supplies if we need them. Get up close, see if it plays, and then back up. I kind of got to wiggle around here. There we go. Medical report 16-8, dated November 2nd, 2145. Patient 0432, a private Steve Jensen of the UAC Darklight Armor Corps Division, expired yesterday at 1543. Private Jensen was suffering from paranoid delusions and full-blown dementia. Treatment was unsuccessful. Initial psychiatric interviews suggested only mild psychosis with speech, motor activity, and thought processes within normal range, paranoia being the only psychotic element directly evident. Reference interview G8A. Private Steve Jensen, October 18, 2145. UAC psychologist Dr. Hooper interviewing Steve Jensen, male, age 27. Steve, can you talk to me about the last few weeks, please? I don't want to talk. Well, I'm here to help you, Steve. I've tried talking. They think I'm crazy. You think I'm crazy. They, your colleagues, aren't doctors. Let me help you. Help? Nothing can help us. Prior sessions over a period of 72 hours reveal rapid deterioration of both physical and mental capacity, with behavior inconsistent with any known patterns. The patient was responsive for brief periods and had to be restrained during interviews. Reference interview H-3-2, Private Steve Jensen, October 21st, 2145. Tell me what you see, Steve. I don't want to see it anymore. I don't want to feel it. <clears throat> They'll be here soon, and then you'll see it. Can you talk about what you see? <laughs> 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 Steve, patient unresponsive, terminating interview. We have exhausted all known forms of drug treatment in hopes of finding a way to abate this strange outbreak of dementia, and I have yet to receive any additional data from the psychiatrists back on Earth. Options are quickly dwindling. Oh, so we actually got to hear some of the interviews with Steve Jensen, who actually committed suicide a few days after the interviews. Eh, he does not sound sane, that's for sure. He sounds quite delusional and uh, probably even possessed at some points. Anyway, we can actually read the written reports as well. So let's start with the October reports. We have October 1st, 2145 report. We sent the first batch of volunteers through the teleporter today. Subjects were administered a mild anesthesia to put them under for the duration of the experiment. They reported no side effects when awakened, and the only reported injury was subject number seven, who had several lacerations after recombination on the receiving pad. We have speculated they were somehow self-inflicted during matter transference, but are unable to fully explain how physical damage could be administered during an instantaneous transfer. 
That's a good point. October 12th report. Research subjects have become increasingly delusional. An interesting pattern has emerged in recent psych evaluations. All subjects are reporting supernatural experiences. While common enough as a schizophrenic manifestation, I have never seen the same psychosis affect all subjects in a controlled test group. Recommend occipital probes to check for growths or swelling. Applied pressure in this region might explain the mass hallucinations. Again, I suggest halting experimentation on these subjects until we discover what is affecting them. That's a good idea. Halt all more experiments. October 29th report. Jameson cleared the order for holding the test subject pending a detailed physical analysis. I uploaded a request for new volunteers as we should have a few new transfers that are looking for free credits. I am copying Sandra on this log entry. Be sure and check all potential candidates for immediate family or local social ties. Make sure they won't be missed. Corporate does not want to deal with any more litigations. Oh my gosh, that... Ugh, this company is messed up, I tell ya. Now we got the November reports. November 2nd, 2145 report. Test Subject 4 attacked an inspector today. I want to know who was responsible for letting them into the wreck area, especially when it was known that non-UAC personnel were coming through today. The last thing we needed was another accident. Betruger assured me that no report would be filed, but until we block these inspectors from entering secure areas, we risk exposure. We have retired number four and moved the remaining subjects into the empty Sector 2 offices for closer observation. Well, that's your own dang fault, you guys. November 9th report. The research subjects continue to deteriorate mentally. I have requested a security guard on site. I am beginning to question my own safety working in close proximity to them. Test subject 8 never stops screaming. I have informed the guard that offices occupied by the subjects are to be locked at all times. I ask Dr. Brasky to place some military supplies in the security room locker. If things get out of hand again, I want to be ready. So let, so let this be a clue to you. I, inf I have informed the guard that offices occupied by the subjects. So they ran out of beds, like we learned previously. Now they're putting the test subjects that are experiencing the symptoms in actual offices themselves. And then today, November 15th report. We escorted number eight to the medical lab after further instances of self-mutilation. I have cleared him for final research and disposal. He is no longer useful as a data subject. Testing for today has been halted due to increased power fluctuations. However, Ian thinks he can bypass the fail-safes to boost our throughput, giving us the necessary power to move ahead with the final phase of test 11. He is currently working on the problem in MC routing. I am going to security to seal this area until testing can resume. Okay, yeah, Ian was the guy who told us to find uh, the plasma inducer and said that he was responsible for all this. So, okay, those are the reports. And we're done in this room, so let's move on now. Yep, once again, the Imp Sandwich comes into fruition here. They, man, they really want that Imp Sandwich, don't they? Well, they're not going to get it from Doom Guy, no. Ah, yes, this room. I love this room, actually. The first thing we're going to do is look to the left and take care of a couple of zombies. And then the couple of Imps. Come on, Imp. Come on up here.
Alright, so, we see some cubes here with some giblets inside, like, what in the world is this? It almost looks demonic, but it also looks like a monkey skull. Very bizarre and very, uh, weird, I should say. Don't miss the rockets as well over here, where the zombies were. And yes, here is the missing biohazard box that should be up there. There's also another missing one, I guess. There's two missing ones. So what we need to do is get up to this ledge with the backpack. And to do that, we have to ride one of these boxes up. So the solution to this puzzle is quite simple. We will press the number three and retrieve that. E. It's the last time I'm using the shotgun for up-close zombies. Anyway, number three will come down to us. And then what we're going to do is, is ride it up. Now, sometimes... And sometimes not, another imp will come for you when you get on this thing. So what we're going to do is press the number six. And quickly get on it. Now make sure you're right in the center, otherwise it will pinch you and you will die. Now as it's going towards number, the, the number six slot, jump off. Or just fall off, really. I am going to save the backpack for later on, just to prove a little point. And you'll see when that will be, so we'll come back for the backpack later. Now what I like to do is have my grenades ready as I fall down. For a couple of imps. In this cramped space, because this door is jammed, and it just takes us back out to where we just were. Oh my gosh, Michael Abrams! It's the BFG 9000! We finally made it! Now what was the code? I already know the code, but because I want to fully explain everything, I will show you. Michael Abrams. Um. Where was that? I guess it was in... His security report. His security report... I'm not going to listen to it again. But his security report basically said that the code would be 901 for the BFG 9000. However, if you read the email, the code was changed from 901 to 931 because zero is an invalid number. So let's try that. 931. We're in. Open the chamber to the BFG 9000. We have it, everybody. Notice the BFG count is 4 and 0. Keep that number in mind. So let's read about the BFG 9000, shall we? BFG 9000. This prototype fires a threaded variable energy charge. UAC technicians have warned of stability issues at full power. Alright, yeah, full power. You can hold down the primary fire button and it will actually charge the BFG-9000 and you can fire all four shots at the same time. However, don't hold it for too long, otherwise you will die. I don't normally hold down the primary fire button. I usually just fire it in one-shot bursts anyway. So let's move on. Alright, over on this laptop, we can read the last report. 
Dr. Raleigh requested military supplies placed in a storage locker in case of emergency. A security team member delivered the supplies today and secured them in locker 116. The lock code was set as 972. Report upload accepted November 14th, 2145. So 972 is this number right here. We have a BFG cell. That was that green thing that we picked up. And if we notice, now we have four and six in the reserve. So keep that number in mind as well. Four and six. Activate oxygen purge. Anon systems deactivated. All right. We're now able to get inside this room from the opposite side. See, right here is where we tried to get through, but we couldn't. Now we'll unlock the offices. This is the button we wanted. For some reason, I also heard a revenant as well. Keep that sound effect in mind. Make sure to get the plasma cell over here if you need it. Now we could go back to operations, however, like I said, let's go back to that backpack. Now if you guys recall all the other previous backpacks, it said that the backpack gave us a BFG cell. Well... When we first got the BFG, it didn't look like it gave us any cells. Well, how about if we already have the weapon? Will it give us ammo? Press the number six and retrieve the three cube. Make sure I don't need any other extra supplies here. While we're waiting. So, press on the number six. Make sure we are centered. Otherwise, it will pinch us and squish us, which is never a good thing. Run off. We have the BFG out, four and six. It says it gave us a BFG cell, but look, the number did not change. That's a serious bummer, everybody. But that's essentially what it does. The backpack in this game, the bottom line is the point I'm trying to make with this whole thing is that the backpack is indeed bugged in this game. It does not give you BFG cells like it says it does. So now we'll head back through this door. I'd like to have my... I guess we can test the BFG. Why not? Uh huh. That was just one blast of it, too. So that was that revenant noise we heard. So now we'll go in operations. On the left side, it still goes to the same dead-end elevator, and we can't use it. Uh huh. All these... Offices. Yes, these are real offices, but patients were inside them. I just let the zombies come to me. Just because I want to. I like it when they come to me. Still got a couple more zombies. Yes, everybody must jib. We'll head through the first office of uh, Steve Resco. Now, the body inside here would not have been Steve Resco. It would have been somebody else, which in this case, it's Phil Wilson. So let's listen to what uh, 
Phil Wilson has to say. Volunteers. Audio log for Phil Wilson, medical technician, Delta Labs. October 20th, 2145. Uh, today I witnessed the third test of the teleporter in the three weeks that I've been here. Volunteers are becoming harder and harder to come by, and it isn't difficult to see why. They all come back screaming like loons about demons, pools of blood. It's real fire and brimstone stuff. At first I wasn't paying much attention, just doing my job, but the last was Robert Clayton. Now, I met him my first day here. This guy chews up rocks and spits out gravel, as tough as they come. Having to sedate him and drag his drooling body to the isolation, it's really freaked me out. I'm gonna put in for a transfer as soon as I'm able. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea there, Phil Wilson. Phil, I am going to need you to help me next week with my work. I've got so many files and reports to enter into the computer that I don't have time to actually see my patients. I will box up some of my paperwork and send it over to you. If you could enter the reports into the computer, that would surely help me. Thank you, Dr. Peter Raleigh. Alright. That's that. So that's all in his office. So let's move on. There's... Yeah, see, here is a, another zombie that died. And yeah, this was not the, uh... This is not the body of Matt Hooper. This is... It's, it's Matt Hooper's office, but a patient is using it as an infirmary bed. Another PDA of Frank Cinders. So let's see what, uh... Frank Cinders has to say. Status report. As requested, the following is my initial feedback on my first trip through the portal. Private First Class Frank Cinder dated October 15, 2145. I, uh, I don't know exactly where to begin. Obviously, I survived the first trip and feel no worse for the wear. I, I'm not feeling any of the symptoms reported by the others who have gone in before me, but I'm at a point where I'm still trying to process everything. Thankfully, the place looks deserted and devoid of any life, but, uh, the flames and heat and stench of the place, it smells of death, decay, and burnt flesh. Tomorrow, we're going back in with some of the eggheads, um, science division, to start securing forward positions, and we expect to start sending out the mapping droids at the same time. I must admit on a personal note that I, I've, I've got a really, really bad feeling about this. I don't understand what we're doing there or, or what we hope to prove. PFC Cinders, signing off. Yeah, th that's a good point there, Frank Cinders. What are we trying to prove by going into hell? That doesn't make any sense. Tired of the same old, same old when it comes to snacking? Store-bought treats getting you down? Then you need the new Martian Buddy Lil Baklava Oven. You heard right, Baklava. How many times have you said, mmm boy, I could really go for some scrumptious Baklava right now? Well now it's quick and easy anytime. Come to www.martianbuddy.com for more info on the new Martian Buddy Lil Baklava Oven and hundreds of other great products. Remember, Martian Buddy is your buddy. And on their website, of course. Hey, Frank, you left your lunch on my desk again. I put it in the storage cabinet number 112. There it is. The combination is 538. Try to remember to pick it up. Last time you forgot it was in there for a week, and that stuff stunk to high heaven. What the hell you got in there? Guy. Ugh. <laughs> Well, let's hope his lunch is not in there when we go back and open up that storage locker with the code 538. I'm sure it's not in there, right? I'm sure he didn't forget his lunch again. Well, let's continue on. Well, that's Matt Hooper. Um, Christian Ant Cow. 
I know a lot of these names on the offices are actually workers at id software. Jerry Keyham. Nothing inside here. Now watch out when you head down this hallway towards the zombies. We have an imp that wants to surprise you and give you a big hug. As you saw, his arms were open. He wanted to give you a hug. Just a few zombies down here. Grab up the supplies if you need them. Yeah, this is a long level, if you guys haven't noticed. Man, I'm jibbing everybody, I love it. Let's head through the server room first, because that is important. It has... The Plasma Inducer. That's exactly what we need. So, yay. Some supplies here. We also have another storage locker. Um, we don't have the code, though. Hmm. Looking around. Looking around. Oh! There is a post-it note on the side. 715. There's the code. It's kind of trollish. Again, another BFG cell, but again, I'll show ya. No BFG ammo gained, even though it said it gave us a BFG cell. This is kind of trollish, it's like... You think the code is going to be in a PDA, you know, but the code is actually on a post-it note. This is Andy Chang. I know he is a worker at id Software, or was. I don't know if he still is. armor shards behind here if you need them, and we'll move on. Alright, cool. Here is the jammed elevator. See, the box needs to be pushed out of the way. So, we'll do that. Now the elevator is unjammed, and we can ride it down to the lobby. out for several zombies that will have materialized here, but also watch out for two, I think it's two, commando zombies. There we go. Not bad if you know they are there. That's it. We are now able. We have the plasma inducer. So let's go back and give it to him. At long last. And we'll plug it in. Excellent. That will get the tele. We're plugging in. Make you don't have much time. You're going to need to teleport across the containment chamber. It's the only way through this part of the complex. Head into the chamber and initiate the sequence on the machine, and I'll take care of the rest. I'm not going with you. Good luck. But before you go, I want you to take something. It's a journal I made about the experiments. Those things. It's all there. It'll explain everything. Get it to someone so this never happens again. Okay, we got the video log here. Let's find a nice, quiet place to listen to it. That's one thing good about this game is that it's atmospherically ambient, but when you want a quiet place, it's hard to find one sometimes. This is a very long video disc. Well, not very long, but it's longer than most. But it does explain a lot of what has happened. So, let's give it a listen. It's not really a video you watch, it's a video you listen to. So, Teleportation Experiments. Creator Ian McCormick. Date November 15th, 2145. 
Results of the Human Teleportation Experiments. My name is Ian McCormick, and I'm a research specialist stationed on Mars, working for the UAC. My primary job is, or rather was, to assist Dr. Malcolm Betruger in a variety of experiments, though for the past year we've been focusing almost exclusively on teleportation. I don't know if I'll make it out of here alive, so I'm recording this video log to let someone know what happened, and with that knowledge, prevent it from happening again. Initially, the teleportation experiments were amazing. We were creating a new science, and the prospects of it changing our way of life were, well, they were outstanding. I was proud to be associated with such an amazing project and someone as talented as Dr. Petruger. We noticed early on, oh, probably before we had completed maybe a dozen successful tests, that there was a variable delay during the teleportation. The objects are broken down at the quantum level, transported, and then reassembled. Each stage of the process should have been instantaneous, but it, it wasn't, and we didn't know why. We sent a video drone through and were shocked at the images it sent back. Just a few frames of video right before the drone came back through showed what appeared to be several sets of eyes looking directly at the probe. We had just found a living, breathing creature that was not human. Petruger immediately sent out a request for volunteers. He specifically wanted UAC security force members because he wanted to capture one of these creatures. I've made a lot of mistakes, but I am most ashamed of my involvement during the next phase. To get medical clearance to send human subjects through the device, I... I doctored up several of our reports to indicate that we had performed living tissue experiments. I did not regret it at the time, but a few days later, when our third test subject came back, he was chewing off his own fingers. It seemed he was clinically insane. We started sending teams in, about once every two days. The teams were reporting nightmarish experiences, and sightings of things that ultimately made us conclude that the other dimension was not just another dimension. It was hell, and the creatures we were bringing back, demons. And then Betruger, he went through the portal himself. I, I don't know what he was thinking. It was an unscheduled trip, and he just went, and we couldn't stop him. And when he came back, he had changed. He sounded and looked the same, but he just... I, I don't know, he was, he was just different. And then he did the unthinkable. He took the Soul Cube, the device that was discovered in the ruins, into the portal. The portal stabilizers just started to fail, and, and then... Living hell erupted into the base. Oh, we were stupid for not destroying the portals as soon as we realized what was on the other side. Oh God, forgive me. I blame myself for my part in this. Please, someone, never let this happen again. I'm sorry, Ian McCormick. Um, yeah, that's a bit... Freaky. I won't spend a whole lot of time talking about this, but it seemed that when they discovered there was a hellish dimension on the other side of this teleporter, um, I guess Dr. Petruger went in the teleporter, and he came back, changed. Like, I don't know, he was just changed. And then he took the soul cube, and he went back through the teleporter again, and he came back. But this time, Hell followed with him. That's crazy. So one thing I forgot to do, actually, and good thing I remember to do it, as I looked over to my checklist, is I didn't go back to the very first storage locker we skipped. Code is... Five, three, eight. Grab the supplies, and look, he forgot his lunch again. Frank Cinders forgot his lunch again. My goodness. It probably stinks, too.
And so now we'll go through the teleporter. Note, this is not the teleporter that Dr. Malcolm Betruger used. Um, this is just... As we kind of piece together... Here, I'll explain in a bit. Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. Gather up some supplies here if you need them. But yeah, this is not the teleporter that Dr. Malcolm Betruger used to go through into hell. If you've been listening to the audio logs and the written reports, you'll find out that they first began building prototype teleports. This is a miniature one, basically, where if you teleport, it will just take you over there. So that's where we're going to go in the next chapter. We'll be on that side. You know, they're teleporters that basically don't take you to another dimension. It just takes you across the way. Systems activated. Teleportation is minus With that, I'm Big Mac Davis here, and I will see you in the next area. And so, when we come back together again for the next Doom 3 BFG Edition episode walkthrough, we will be in Area 17, the Delta Lab Sector 3, I believe. So, take care, everybody. I will see you then.